Hello everyone and welcome back to the good stuff. Hope you're all having a great Sunday because I will try to improve it at least a little bit further. Uh, it is of course the 1858 match between Paul Charles Morphy and Adolf Anderson, the greatest chess match of the 19th century that took place in 1858 in Paris. Uh, and so far we've checked out seven games accidentally in the previous video. Uh, I've shown game eight uh, prior to game seven, so I'm only showing game seven now. But uh, you know, uh, all in all, nothing has been spoiled and you know, uh, the, 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 the match still continues in a, in a great way uh, because this is the first uh, first one to seven wins draws not counting and since the game eight ended in a draw uh, I haven't really ruined anything for you but still uh, sorry about that uh, so uh, this one is uh, again a really really a fun game and it really shows a lot uh, about the the state uh, that Anderson is currently in being down so many points uh, in the match and I've used this quote from David Bronstein saying that a game of chess is not an examination of knowledge it is a battle of nerves and and while this holds true for, for a chess game, uh, even more so, uh, I would say, for a chess match. So... Uh, that being said, let's check out the game and, and see what happened. Uh, what's happening in this one. Morphy again with the white pieces opens with e4 and now Anderson returns to his Scandinavian defense and goes for d5. He already tried it once, uh, now he's going to try it again but with a very different line. So e captures on d5 and now he grabs the pawn. In the previous game, if you remember, knight to f6 was played. So queen captures on d5, knight to c3 and I even made a video on a, a really fun line of the Scandinavian defense that I enjoy playing. If you still haven't seen it, do check it out. I will put a link into it. Uh, the, the first thing you will see in the description below. Uh, you know, a, a fun way to try the Scandinavian defense. So usually there's queen d8, there's queen to a5, and uh, the video I'm uh, talking about, I, I analyze queen to d6, which is my favorite here. But okay, queen to a5, uh, even our good friend Johan Jakob Leventhal agrees that this is not a great attempt with black. So queen to a5, keeping the queen active uh, is definitely the way to go. Uh, d4, Morphy occupies the, the center with a pawn, and now e5. This is the so-called Anderson counterattack uh, in, in this line of the Scandinavian. As you see, um, uh, Anderson's name pops out in pretty much every opening and every line that uh, we use because, well, he was uh, just so influential during his lifetime. So d captures on e5, we have queen captures on e5 with check, Morphy plays bishop to e2, and now Anderson develops with tempo, he plays bishop to b4. Now the threat is captures, captures, and of course captures, uh, he wants to win a pawn, uh, but Morphy doesn't defend with bishop to d2, Morphy says you can have your pawn, uh, I'm all about the development. Knight to f3 now attacking Anderson's queen and there really isn't not uh, anything better here you have to accept the gift bishop captures on c3 was played b captures queen captures on c3 with check also attacking the rook so you have to play bishop to d2 uh, bishop to d2 now the queen is defending the rook and Anderson goes back queen to c5 and now rook to b1 and you can see for the price of this one pawn Morphy has all of these pieces nicely developed whereas Anderson only has a queen out and that's not a, not a sign of a great attacker. So knight to c6, Anderson has to hurry and to start developing his pieces. We have castles and now knight to f6. And this position now uh, has never been reached again. So uh, it is now as of move 11 that we have a completely new game. Uh, and now Morphy plays bishop to f4. He says, all right, you can castle. I'm going to win back my pawn and we just continue playing while I'm a little bit ahead in development. So nothing serious here. Black is perfectly fine. Uh, Anderson castles, there's really no uh, way of defending this pawn, and now Morphy goes after the pawn. If Morphy wanted, he could play rook to b5 and, you know, keep it very active, uh, not, not uh, trying to claim his pawn back a bit too soon, and after queen e7 defending the pawn, uh, even rook to e1, uh, placing the rook on the e-file as the queen is on e7, later on maybe we can play bishop to d3, and there, there also maybe w one way to play this, but uh, Morphy says, no, let's not overcomplicate, let's play bishop captures on c7, and here he gives Anderson quite a lot of moves. Anderson can play rook to e8, he could play knight to e4, he could play uh, knight to d4, uh, a, lot, a, lot of, uh, a lot of options here. But the move Anderson plays uh, maybe allows Morphy to, well, just... Um, uh, keep it keep it too simple and not allow Anderson to go for any complications. So knight to e4 uh, maybe is the way to go here. After knight to e4, you're threatening knight to c3, uh, forking the rook, the queen, the bishop. So maybe knight to e4 uh, would be great here. But Anderson played knight to d4, and Morphy very happily captured this knight. Uh, queen captures on d4, Anderson grabbed the bishop, uh, and now bishop to d3. Morphy just uh, places the bishop on this long diagonal, as the bishop wasn't really doing all that much on e2. 
and now bishop to g4, uh, trying to capture here and mess up Morphe's pawn structure, but now just knight to g5. Now, this knight can't really move, uh, you're gonna lose the h7 pawn if you do this. Uh, you could play h6 right away, uh, but then knight to e4, and uh, well, this is this is very good for white. If you capture, then queen captures, you have some checkmating threats, so maybe not the, the greatest way to chase off this knight. So here, Anderson plays rook f to d8, attacking Morphe's queen, and Morphe moves it with tempo. Queen b4, attacking the b7 pawn. And uh, you can't really defend it. Our good friend Johan ja Jakob Lowenthal uh, even gives the following line as how to uh, defend incorrectly. If you play b6 and try to defend this way, we're just going to play knight captures on h7. And uh, there is not uh, much you can do. If uh, you can't capture with the king, the knight's defended. If you capture with the knight, then queen captures bishop here. And we won the h7 pawn instead of the b7 pawn. But we're winning a pawn. Uh, one thing that Anderson could do here if he was uh, you know, really eager to to keep it an active game, uh, he could play h6 now. Uh, point being that now after the knight moves, uh, let's say uh, we're going to go knight to e4, Anderson plays knight to d7, avoids a trade here, and after Morphe grabs a pawn, he can play knight to, uh, queen to f4 and uh, keep an active position. He would be down a pawn, but uh, I mean, that should not be a problem for Anderson. He should uh, bring the... Uh, knight to e5, maybe maybe try and do some sort of a rook lift here. It's not going to be easy with the knight guarding f6 and bishop x-raying the g6 square, but, you know, it, it's a start. Uh, but Anderson, already being uh, so much down in the match, uh, decides to retreat with bishop to c8. And this is a really sad move that um, when you have to make it disconnecting the rooks like this, uh, uh, going back instead of going forward, not uh, not a move that, you know, is consistent with uh, Anderson's nature. Uh, but okay, uh, rook f to e1. Uh, Morphe not rushing anything. Bishop to c4 is possible going after f7, but uh, just rook to d7 defends this. So Morphe says, your rooks are disconnected. Uh, let's play rook f to e1. And now uh, Anderson has to be very, very careful here. For example, if you try to chase away the knight like this with h6 now, uh, rook to e7 is just uh, extremely strong here, attacking the queen, and after queen to d6, trying to trade off the queens now, we're very happily going to do this. Captures, captures, and now we don't even have to capture on f7 right away. We can play rook to e1, and, you know, white's position is just much better. We're going to capture on f7 next, and th th there's not much black can do about this. Uh, of course, if you capture the knight, then we give up the rook, and it's checkmate. The bishop still covers the h7 square. So, uh, th 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 there was only one possible moment to play h6 and it was um, at, at that time where where Anderson should have sacrificed the b7 pawn for activity here uh, he's still gonna lose material and he you know is a very very passive so uh, I don't know uh, it, it doesn't seem like Anderson is playing this game you know with his full strength or Morphe just has this effect on all of the opponents that he faces so here Anderson plays a5 attacks Morphe's queen now Morphe says all right I could play pretty much anything here but I'm gonna play queen e7 and trade queens my position is just better so why not uh, Anderson trades here there's really not much else you could do f7 is being threatened so queen captures here we have rook captures on e7 and now uh, again f7 being threatened not much for you to do here uh, Anderson tries one very tricky move knight to d5 he attacks the rook but he uh, allows Morphe to capture on h7 and Morphe of course does bishop captures on h7 you have to play king to h8 if you go to f8 it's a very easy checkmate rook captures on f7 king to e8 and now rook to e1 check and there are no squares for the king you have to block and then this will just be checkmate so after bishop captures on h7 Anderson forced to go to, to the h8 square and now rook Rook captures on f7. Morphe, Morphe grabbing more material, and there's not much you can do here. Knight to c3, attacking the rook and the pawn here. Anderson has to win back some material at least, but now rook to e1. We have knight captures on a2, and now Morphe's position is completely winning. There are a lot of winning moves here, but, uh, you know, uh, just for fun, feel free to pause the video here and try to find the way that Morphe ended the game uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on finding this uh, uh, idea. It is, in fact, the strongest move recommended by the engine. And if you found it, um, I have no doubt that this will greatly improve your Sunday. Uh, and for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is Rook to F4. Uh, this is the move that Morphe played. You could play Rook to F3. It's not a problem, but Rook to F4 is, you know, uh, on, on an engine uh, scale of precision is a bit more precise. And this is, of course, what Morphe played. Uh, and here, there's really not much you can do.
uh, the rook is coming to h4 and that's it there there's no defending the position uh, Anderson played one more move he played rook to a6 trying to maybe somehow shift the uh, the rook over here uh, but Morphy doesn't even rush with some like knight to f7 check uh, oh you can't rush because the bishop is hanging he just brings the bishop back bishop to d3 <clears throat> uh, this comes with tempo and now a d h7 square is off limits to the black king the rook is under attack and there's no no more moves here for Anderson uh, so it was in this position on move 25 that Adolf Anderson resigned the game and yet another victory for Paul Charles Morphy. So here you resign because, well, if you try rook to h6, we already said that this is just a monster fork, uh, forking the, both of the rooks and the king. There is nothing you can do here. And if you try something weird like rook captures on d3, trying to give up uh, the, the, you know, the exchange, uh, this is just mate in one. As, or, or rather, you could even play uh, rook, rook to f8 with mate in one, as the knight also covers the h7 square. Uh, so yeah, really impressive stuff by Morphy. Uh, Anderson uh, gave him, uh, you know, uh, uh, some chances, but unlike Anderson in the previous game, Morphy uh, really nicely exploited all of the chances and, you know, just crushed Anderson here in a, in a very short game in, in 25 moves. So tough position for Anderson. Uh, after eight games that were played, um, uh, you all know if you've been following so far, uh, Anderson started with a win, then they drew the second game, Morphy retaliated in the third game, and then Morphy got four wins in a row uh, up until game eight uh, and then uh, th there was another draw because we already have shown game eight in the previous video so Anderson down a lot in the match and it will be very interesting to see what he will attempt to, to come back and will he gain at least one more win against Morphe or maybe he's gonna equalize we'll see what happens I mean we're still uh, very early on in the, in the Morphe saga uh, so yeah uh, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And congratulations to everyone who successfully improved their Sunday. Uh, I would like to thank Tom Derolo, uh, NTI in New Orleans, uh, Pablo Mohan, uh, Richard Yarnell, and Michael Sprague for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon, continuing the coverage of the Morphe Saga uh, until it ends. Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.